So you want to get into air cooling, but you don't know where to start. Well, guess what? We're gonna talk about the penultimate air cooling guide right now on Robitech. Welcome to the world of air cooling. Guys, I wanna get you through some steps to help you through what is not as simplistic of a process as if you might cool your PC with an AIO. Now, that is not to say, and I wanna, I wanna, I wanna ruin this, this uh, misinformation right now. That is not to say that air cooling is not as good as cooling with an AIO. There are air coolers that can cool as good, if not better than AIOs. But there are some things that you need to consider when you are going to air cool a PC. So these are some things that we're gonna cover specifically in this video to help you through the maze of air cooling, so to speak. And by the time you get through it, you will be able to, what I hope, is be able to do this effortlessly and really have the information that you need to do this correctly. First and foremost, we're gonna give you an overview of air cooling, and that means that we really need to talk about fan types and air cooling from a basic standpoint. Then we're gonna talk about the best cases and things that you need to consider in a case when doing an air-cooled build. We're gonna talk about how to choose an air cooler and some good air cooler choices. We're gonna talk about the best fan setups for air-cooled builds. And then finally, we're gonna just talk about some miscellaneous tips and tricks that are kind of outside of the whole thing to just kind of wrap it up. So, like I said, let's get started in this journey and let's talk about an overview of air cooling. PC fans come in all different shapes and sizes. Most people talk about the sizes at 120 millimeters or 140 millimeters, and they can get very, very large. Now, people talk very specifically about sizes, but in a lot of cases, they don't talk about something that is also very different about fans, and that is airflow fans versus what's called high static pressure fans. Airflow fans are meant to push the most amount of air in the fastest amount of time. In fact, they're usually tied to a term called CFM, which is cubic feet per minute. And that's a way of measuring volume of air that is pushed through a fan. These are really meant for open air cases where nothing blocks them. Think of them as like exhaust or front case fans. That's the part that's really important. Now there's a fan that a lot of people don't talk about because most people talk about airflow fans, but they don't talk about what are called high static pressure fans. And these are meant to push air in areas that are resistant. They create a special vortex in terms of the way that their fan, way that their fan blades are made. They don't push as much air because of their fan design, given what they're doing to force air through, but it's a smaller amount of air. And they're meant for things like CPU coolers, radiators, or things like thick dust filters. So why the fan lesson then, Roby? Like, why are we talking about fans when we're gonna talk about air coolers? Because in order for an air cooler to cool effectively, the case and the whole system has to be set up so the air cooler can do its job, effect, job effectively. If you don't set them up correctly and you set them up incorrectly and you have the wrong fans or the, right, the wrong type of airflow, you're essentially going to make it impossible or very hard for the air cooler to do its job correctly. This is something you don't necessarily have to worry about with AIOs because of where the AIO sits and that fans directly work for there, but are much more important in things like, air, in, in things like using air coolers. So let's talk about cases, because cases are just as important as we're talking about fans. And cases come in all shapes and sizes. There are some creatively awesome, super funny ones, and then there are some ones that are, you know, not so awesome and basic and blocky. When you talk about airflow, you need to consider certain cases because they are going to make the airflow situation way more effective. Airflow specific cases are things like the uh, uh, Corsair 5000D, the Fantex P500A, the Fractal Meshify, the Cooler Master TD500, the Lee & Lee Landcool Mesh, or the Antec D700 Flux. These are specifically designed in airflow in mind. And airflow for these cases move from front to back and create very little impedance in the front so that way you can have good airflow all the way through the case. Now you have to think about it, front of the case is very cool and it's pushing hot air out and these cases are specifically designed so when they have airflow fans and they're pushing the air through, the heat is transferring through them very quickly and that means that the air cooler is getting a ton of air and doing its job effectively. The other thing that's really important as well when we think about cases is making sure that you have enough room inside of your case for some of these big air coolers if you're gonna use like 5900Xs or Intel 11900Ks to basically sit in there, you need really big air coolers and you need to make sure that your case has enough room in which all of the cases that I mentioned do to be able to use air coolers like this. Now there are examples of what are called bad airflow cases and that doesn't necessarily make them bad cases but they are bad for air cooling setups. Cases like the NZXT H510, 
cases like the Lee and Lee 011 Dynamic. Oh, oh, oh. I know that got some of you triggered, and I know that, but hear me out. Der Bauer created the Lee and Lee 011 Dynamic specifically for water cooling. And the thing is, is that the air slots in which all of the intake for those fans are actually pretty covered and are best used with high static pressure fans. So even though it has nine fans, and in the case of the XL, 10 fans, the thing is, is that it's not getting a massive amount of air to where an air cooler would sit, meaning that that is not an ideal case for air cooling. Now, if you're gonna do AIO cooling or if you're gonna do uh, custom liquid cooling, that case is great. But for air cooling, it is not an ideal option. Another one would be the Razer Tomahawk or things like the Corsair Crystal 570X. One of the things you're seeing here when I'm talking about all these cases, again, fronts are usually sealed. There's not a ton of airflow being able to get in there. So let's talk about the meat then. We've given you all of the information you need to do this effectively, but now you're at the point like, okay, Roby, how do I actually choose an air cooler for my PC? Well, let me be super clear. This is nowhere near as simple as AIO coolers. And honestly, AIO coolers, if you're new to, if you're new to building a PC, AIO coolers or all-in-one liquid coolers, which we'll do a different video on later, are actually much easier to use to kind of figure out how to do cooling solutions. That's not to say that choosing an air cooler isn't possible, it's just not as easy. When it comes to air coolers, what you'll see is a number being thrown on, which is called TDP, which stands for thermal design power which is the higher the TDP, the better the cooler. Manufacturers used to do a much better job, mainly Intel and AMD, of providing us, or thus the customers, a better idea of what the TDP actually was. But now in the world of boost clocks and boosting and all of the other things, actually determining the TDP for an actual CPU is actually very, very hard. So if you're really wanting to get into this, you're gonna have to do your research to make sure you choose a proper air cooler. If we're gonna go and do an air cooler, we're gonna recommend doing it in this order. Looking at Noctua, they have a very, very good configurator. Second is Be Quiet, which is not near as good, but still easy enough to be able to figure out what you need. Then in the distant third is Cryorig, which will at least give you the TDP. And then outside of that, when you're looking at Cooler Master, Deep Cool, unfortunately, you're gonna have to look at reviews and there's gonna have to do some really de uh, deep digging to try and figure out if that CPU cooler is really gonna work for you. Okay, so what else do you need to consider when you're going to choose an air cooler? Because now I'm, I'm gonna go to their site and I'm gonna put some of these things there. But there are some other things you need to consider and some of this stuff is much easier to find. First and foremost, you need to think about RAM clearance. As RAM has gotten faster, as RAM has gotten more powerful, then the heat sinks have gotten bigger, more flary. Because again, we all know that RGB and of course looking flary is gonna make your performance go up by like a bajillion percent. You do have to think about case clearance. We talked about that already, but again, Newegg, uh, Newegg, Amazon, any of those places actually will show, and in fact, many case manufacturers will actually show you what the case clearance is for that. GPU clearance. Now this might be surprising, but the reason I talk about GPU clearance is specifically when you're using really massive air coolers like the NH D15 from Noctua. The thing is, is that with how the spacing is for the by 16 slot for PCIe on some motherboards can be pushed right up against that VRM, which means you could actually have the air cooler sitting right up against the GPU uh, backplate, which is an issue for heat transfer. So again, GPU and where the GPU spacing and GPU clearance is, is something you need to consider if you're going to be using a really big air cooler. Okay, so finally, let's talk about a case study. Let's just do this all up from the beginning and uh, we're gonna walk through it. So let's choose an airflow case. We're gonna choose the Corsair 5000D. We're gonna put this up on screen right now and you're seeing a Corsair 5000D. So the fan capacity for Corsair 5000D is actually 10 120 millimeter fans. I know, that blows my mind, 10 fans, that's a ton. Or you could do four 140 millimeter fans or some mix of that. Maximum CPU, cooler height is 170 millimeters. So if we were gonna do any one of our, uh, whether that's a Deep Rock 4, or if we were gonna do um, the, um, D, the NHD15, either one of those would fit within this case without an issue. Maximum GPU length is 420 millimeters, and actually it's spacing wise, depending on the motherboard we use, is gonna be absolutely fine for either one of those. It actually comes with two fans, one at the rear and one at the exhaust, both are single 120 millimeter, and they're airflow based fans. They're actually pretty good at effectively cooling the case as is, but that's not what we're gonna do. We wanna build an optimal case. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out both of those fans and we're gonna put in three fans that are considered RGB airflow fans. And I'm gonna stick with Corsair because Corsair is the, the case that we're using and we wanna basically make sure they're RGB and everything looks good. So we've got three options. Corsair QO120, which has a CFM of 41.8, again, cubic feet per minute. So this is how much air it flows. 
The next one is the Corsair ML120, which has got a CFM of 47.3. And then finally, you've got the Corsair LL120, which has got a CFM of 42.3. Now, why am I telling you about three different fans? Obviously, the obvious choice, Roby, is the ML120, given that it's got the highest CFM and therefore is going to have the best performance. Aye, you would be correct, but there is some things to think about a little bit when you look at fans, because fans, even though we're talking about three airflow fans, there are actually differences between these three fans. First and foremost, the ML120 is built on maglev. It's very, very quiet, but it only has a limited amount of RGB capacity. The second one, the LL120s are actually have a lot of, a lot more um, RGB capacity, and you have a higher CFM than the QLs, but they are much noisier. And then you've got what's called a mix of the two, quiet, but not near the airflow with the Corsair QL120s, which gives you a little bit of both. So in our case, we're gonna do the Corsair QL120. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our three fans, we're gonna put our three QL120s in the front, and we're gonna take the same one and put one in the back. So now what we've got is we've got three intake and a single exhaust. Now remember when I was talking about air pressure? Ha, this is a great time to talk about that. There are three ways in which you can set up air pressure within a case. The first one is called positive, the second is called negative, and the third one is called neutral. We, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Positive means that you have more fans bringing in air than you actually have uh, being removed. And in our case, if we had three in intake and a single exhaust, we have a very big positive air pressure situation. Now, there are pros and cons to every one of these. The pro for this is that it keeps dust out because again, it's blowing a lot, there's a lot of air coming in. And again, because that's stu that air is stuck in, stuffed in there, as it's being exhausted, you don't have a lot of opportunity for dust to get in. But it does have a harder time removing warm air, which could mean more heat and heat gets trapped. The second is called negative. And negative air pressure means that there is more fans exhausting than bringing it in. So you can have exhaust everywhere. There's just hot air going everywhere. But unfortunately, if you have hot air going everywhere, you're now sucking from all of the other crevices within your PC, uh, dust, etc. This is definitely one that you do not want to stick on your floor. But as a pro, it does get rid of more hot air, which means you're dissipating a lot of heat out of the case. Finally, the last one, which is called neutral. Hey, guess what? You have the same amount of fans blowing air in as you do have fans blowing the air out. Because you have this good balance of air, now what you have is you have equilibrium and peace and everything else. You, you still have dust coming in, but for the most part, everything is balanced and in a good system. So what are we gonna do in our situation? We have a ton of positive air pressure, which isn't bad, but we probably have a little too much. So what are we gonna do to remedy that? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a single 120 millimeter air fan airflow fan right on top in the top left hand corner above the other exhaust. So now we have three fans for intake, two fans for exhaust, and the air is traveling straight up and out. Now you might ask, well, Roby, why don't we make it neutral? Aha, that's a great question. And here's the answer. Look at where the CPU is going to be located in that case. If I was to stick either a fan right above or right in front of it, I'm essentially stealing air from that CPU cooler, which is going to be needed to cool the CPU. So I have positive pressure, just a little, which is okay. Because they're two very powerful airflow fans, I'm still getting a lot of airflow traveling through that case. I now have an air cooler that is getting a ton of healthy cold air to cool the CPU effectively. And I've got an optimal situation, an optimal case setup for my Corsair 5000D. Let's talk about some little additional hints that are just gonna make it just a tiny bit better and just make it a little bit more effective. For air cooling, it is ideal not to put your PC on the floor. I know you're gonna want to, but again, you are gonna constrict airflow from the bottom of the case, which is when a lot of cases actually do pull airflow from there, and you're going to be introducing a lot of dust because dust settles and gets sucked inside the case. And dust does affect airflow over time. Ambient temperature is also going to have an effect on your performance. So if you're in a hot ambient temperature, consider getting an even more powerful cooler to make sure you are effectively cooling your CPU. If you're sitting in Arizona, or if you're sitting in Utah, where it gets really hot and you don't have great air conditioning, I would overcool the crap out of your CPU. You want to pay good money for good quality fans just to ensure that you're not gonna overheat your PC given where you are in the environment. Just because a case has mesh 
doesn't necessarily mean it's an airflow case. Dust filters and other obstructions may have you using high static pressure fans over airflow fans, which will reduce the amount of airflow throwing, flowing through your case. And then finally, just because, just because a case has a lot of fans also doesn't make it a good airflow case either. I talked a little bit about the Lee and Lee 011 dynamic. Again, I don't wanna harp on this too much, but just because something has a ton of fans and the fans have no place to blow or no way to get air, doesn't necessarily make it a good airflow case. That's it. That's all there is to it, guys. The hardest part in this whole thing is just choosing that cooler. Everything else as you plan through it, I hope by giving you, by walking you through how fans work, how cooling works in cases, and how to choose an air cooler, that you now have all the tools that you need to be able to effectively set up an air-cooled build yourself. Given all this, is there anything we missed? Is there something that would have been more helpful? We'd love to know that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, you know what's coming up. Make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we go live right here on Robitech. Also, speaking of live, check out our live show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time and ending around 9 or 10. And also, if you want to see a little bit more of us, check us out on all the socials. We're even hip on the TikTok. And guess what? We've got a brand new channel, the YouTube short channel that just launched where you can check out all of our great short content and some exclusive short content as well. Anyway, guys, we hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.